Uh, the minister was uh, expected to give a speech here, but uh, he's not here. Um, I think he had discussions already with the uh, uh, growers and uh, basically he's from the electorate. He's already spoken to, to, to you. Uh, basically, what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, speak on his behalf and uh, also myself. We, uh, he runs the political office and I run the administration office for all Bangladesh corporation. Uh, firstly, um, I'd like to thank uh, the uh, Marapi Rosa government, um, the Prime Minister Wani Tukokis. Um, he his policy was towards uh, agriculture, and uh, one of the slogans he introduced when he took over uh, office as Prime Minister was uh, take back TNG and make uh, TNG the black richest country um, in the world. I think uh, that statement was not wrong, it's not wrong. We got everything here in this country. Um, going forward, I also want to thank him again for creating um, a oil palm ministry um, to take agriculture forward. Um, in agriculture, oil palm leads the sector. And it was befitting for the government to create a ministry especially to power uh, pump to uh, move forward the industry. So I once again thank the Marapi Rosso government for uh, creating a ministry for World Bank. That is number one. Uh, number two, I would like to acknowledge and thank the private sector. As head of government institution responsible for World Farm, I would like to uh, mention once again here and say thank you to the Britain Farm Oil through Harrison and Crossfield that started oil farm development in this country in the 1968 in Oski. Secondly, I also would like to thank Hagi Oil Palm Limited, a subsidiary of CPEP, International Abasium, International Organization, for coming into this country in around 1972, I think, to start an oil palm program again in this province in Kerala in the same electorate. And going forward, we also want to continue to thank the other companies that came and started the world, world farm business in uh, Okoleta and in ABM and in Million Bay. And again, the Britain Farm World took over from them. They are our very, very important partners. And we need to say thank you to them for being here and for taking us through for the last 50 years. The World Farm Industry Corporation Act was introduced in 1992. But the World Farm was introduced into this country in 1976, 77, 78, around there. We also have to thank the World Bank for coming on board to assist our government to fund these programs in this country. World Bank will continue to help us if we continue to stay with them. And I'm again, once again, I'm delighted to see the representatives of those two companies that came and started the whole farm business here in this country, they continue to um, uh, support us and they're here, the general manager for Hagi World Farm sitting here on my left 
and the CEO of Nipitin Palmer sitting here on my right. Let's give them a big applause. <laughs> because without them, we shouldn't be here. Without them, we should, shouldn't be sitting here. Without them, the government shouldn't be talking about oil palm in agriculture sector. It is through them we have been here. That's why we need to acknowledge them and we need to um, um, give prominence to them. Thirdly, I would like to also acknowledge and say thank you to the provincial administrator here, the host province that in this world and this country, the provincial administrator for Western Italy. I also would like to uh, uh, acknowledge and welcome our open board chairman here. We have known board for a long period of time. Opa chairman is here, who is also part of the OPIC board. We went through some court battles and disputes of our senior chairman and all sorts of things. No more for part of um, And I was the one they appointed as acting and I've uh, gone through all the hours and I got myself uh, permanently appointed in uh, um, May 2022. So uh, the industry as a permanent um, executive officer running the business for the next four years. I've already said one year, but three more years to go. So we we'll continue to go through. Uh, I also, the board members, we have the uh, Austin Growers Association Chairman, Vienna Growers Association Chairman, um, uh, President uh, is also, uh, the department is also part of the board, uh, DAL, part of the board. Uh, I wish to thank you all uh, for being optic through team uh, to this stage where the government has given direction for us to um, look at uh, the OPEC 1992 and look for, for a way forward um, into the future or on how we can be able to mold and shape uh, the industry going forward. Um, um, I oh, acknowledge the presence of our uh, opera director here. Opera is a very, very significant organization in our business. Without the research and development, we can go. Pest and disease is prevalent everywhere around the world. Um, opera has been good. Opera is registered as an NGO and it runs as an independent organization funded by the small owners and the medium company uh, on a small levy of three kina or three kina twenty. That's a very small levy. We complain about levies, that's not money. Uh, that levy we contribute three kina equates to three, four million. That's not enough money to run an institution like Opera. But they managed to uh, run through and uh, they will continue to remain as Opera. Uh, the bill and legislation doesn't touch on them, so we will still have the offer going forward. Thank you, Director, for being here uh, with your staff. The DDA CEO, I also welcome you. Uh, and we have the LFG president here. We welcome you and we uh, believe that uh, going forward, uh, you will contribute uh, equally here. All leaders within the community, tribal leaders, our growers, we welcome you. All stakeholders, ACO, I welcome you on behalf of the minister and my office uh, to uh, take part in this uh, consultative meeting. Uh, just just a, bit, a basic uh, uh, rundown to why the government is pushing for the legislation to go. Uh, is that, uh, uh, as I've said, World Bank was introduced in 1968. And what we have in the country, is what was introduced in that era. We have less than 200,000 hectares planted. Around about 40% of it is small orders. And 60% of it is the mining company. Um, just imagine, we have 48 million hectares in this country. Our land mass is 48 million hectares. We have less than 200,000 hectares. Convert that into present that's less than 
want to of the total arable land, uh, of the total land we have in this country, and it would be about less than 5% of the total arable land suitable for agriculture in this country. There are restrictions on, uh, on uh, deforestation, but we have enough savanna land in this country, and that's what we are focusing on. As a government, something has to be done. Poverty level in this country is very high. Our population is increasing. Where can we go? The only way is to go back into agriculture. And the government is focused to increase agriculture activity in this country. And I've been challenged on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a status of the legislation. But we have a team here going forward that has been working on. On the as aspect of the private sector, the private sector, a private sector comes to do business to grow, not to stay stagnant. stagnant. The bills we have here is more geared towards making land available. That's number one. The former speakers here have said 60 million hectares in. Indonesia, the government owns the land. Five million hectares in Malaysia, the government owns the land. They have no Public view of the land is owned by the people. And it is very, very challenging to have access to land for development. That's why the legislation is geared towards making land available for us, business to grow. And for most, who is going to be the biggest winner? The private sector is going to be the biggest winner because that will increase in their investment, in their business, and in their returns. We cannot continue to stay in the 200,000 or less sectors and make the same kind of money and hoping for the price to increase. You need to increase volume, and that's where the government is coming from. And they are also interested in their tax, they are interested in their export revenue. That's where we are coming from. And the legislation and the stakeholder consultation we are going through for the policy improvement is, is a win-win thing for everyone. No one is going to be left alone or no one is going to be. So we have to take this with a positive mind so that uh, we can holistically uh, look at the policy. Perhaps this has been done, but that's not final. We can discuss, we can amend. And going forward, we can we can, we can do a fine uh, deal. Um, that's because I've been saying that we have two deals. I just want to stress on the two deals. One deal is to regulate the industry. We must get this clear. The other deal is to grow the industry. So in the same uh, reform that we are doing, we have two legislation. One to um, regulate the industry and the other to grow the industry. And the legislation that is involved in growing the uh, industry deals with land on What benefits you get in the development of World Bank? When do you? Where is the local content? Social benefits, schools, roads, aid posts, police posts. All these are taxes in the other deal. Um, what we are doing is just to to get to as part of the requirement by the state source office to finalize that. Um, we failed to start the policy because OPI was already an institution established under law. So uh, um, DAL and the other government departments said, no, let's just go ahead and draw, the, draw up the deal because we have an institution already established that is catering for the industry. That's why we went on to, uh, on to uh, devolving the bills. But uh, state solicitors said, you know, we need to have a policy, so uh, we came back. Um, it was not our intention, I repeat here, it was not an intention to hijack the process by um, pushing for the legislature to come through uh, before the policy. Don't get this mistaken. We already had an established institution that does not require policy. That's what the thinking was. 
but then we have been directed to come back, so to comply with the requirements, we have to, we have to uh, do this. That's basically what I can say. Um, I hope for a fruitful discussion um, and going forward, we can come up with uh, some productive uh, uh, information that can lead to uh, development uh, policy. I think that can, we can go back and uh, amend, make changes and improve on what we have already done. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.